Good afternoon from Yami P TV. Wishing you all well today. Sending loads of love to you as usual. Um, thanks for all the um, great support on that last video. I reckon I'm a day away, day or two away from the Holy Grail. Ooh, it was quite busy here. Um, Gordon Bennett, talking about getting a little back pain and making matters worse in true Uncle Yami fashion. I get sick of it sometimes. Um, or sick of me, I should say. But anyway, today, like a boss, that's a very, very, very good question, you know, that when you, you get a life tariff, right, a life sentence, right, with a recommendation, 20, 25, uh, you know you're getting out. If you get a, a, a sentence where you're to spend the rest of your days behind those, those walls, right, as a natural lifer with no prospects of release, is it fair to say, and is it mostly, is, is it mostly, is do most of them don't give really, uh, as like a boss puts it, a rat's ass about it all. You know what I mean? In, in specifically, I think like a boss talks about Mark Fellows doing a natural life sentence and does he really care either way what happens to him? Well, we could break that down a few ways, right? He's got a natural life sentence. He's appealed against that and it didn't really go that well, right? So does he care about anything ever happening to him? And some of the men I'm going to talk about now, we ask the same question, right? The question is, I'm quite right, so like a boss, no, he doesn't care, right? I, I, I'm believing, right? I'm believing through through the grapevine that Cashman can, can't actually hold his hands up and have a row. Don't know how true that is, but that's the word on the street, right? Fellows can look after himself physically. That's what I've heard, yeah? So hold on. Fellows will know, like we said, there's a hit out on him. We know that he's expecting it any time, right? So he gets stabbed in his head, he gets stabbed in his neck, he wipes it away a little bit, and goes hospital and comes straight back, right? Does he walk about without being tooled up with a weapon on him if he's to expect these kind of attacks? Bit strange, isn't it? Because even if he doesn't mind living or dying, right? Because in, in real reality, um, I used to be feel the same way as many of those natural lifers, and I wasn't a natural lifer. But you could become a seriously, seriously dangerous man when you don't mind dying, right? But to carry a weapon around with him gives him half a chance to have a sword fight, whoever attacks him or whatever, or those two attacks that happened on him, they came out of blue. He never really stood a chance. They were out in the open and the screw stopped it. And so he didn't get a chance to do anything. Did he have weapons on him? We don't know. Right. If he walks about without a weapon, then he's a he's a sitting target because you could be a Kung Fu expert. It doesn't really matter. You're still open to getting yourself killed at any stage. Does he care? I say that he doesn't because actually with a natural life sentence, the only way that that can leave you feeling is that you are, in fact, dead already serving that sentence it doesn't matter whether you do you know you 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 you, you want to live uh to be around the landings to play a few bits of sports or whether you know prison's all right and all that kind of stuff there's nothing worse than not having no release date um on a life term like that with no prospects of even if you behave right of ever get in out so like a boss i answer that question right to the best of my ability i say no in the mark fellows case he definitely doesn't care and any man who commits such crimes right and there's a variety of crimes uh, that men have done that get a natural life term now his were two alleged hits right so when you're committing that kind of crime I don't think you care much anyway, unless you see yourself as Antonio Banderas and Silver, um, Sylvester Stallone and um, Leon, what was his name again? Uh, Renny Russo, right? Unless you just see yourself in your warped state of mind as a legendary hitman and, you know, you, you like the feel of, of, of killing, basically, for hire, for whatever it was, for money and everything, and you, you take that on as a job, in, in which case you're callous anyway, uh, because you enjoy killing people or you had to kill them they might we don't actually know really the real reasons for it we do know that there weren't really many attachments between him and paul massey right so we have to take it that it was a hit 
right? So to commit those kind of crimes, you're cunning, deceitful, the planning and, you know, all the rigmarole that goes through it. You're seriously, seriously dangerous. That taken away from you, because wh whatever crimes you're committing, I don't care whether you think you're an expert um, at what you do, because I used to think I was the greatest Pink Panther of all time. There's many armed blaggers that think, yeah, yeah, I was the greatest armed robber, but you always end up getting nicked. So for, for you to know when you're going on those bits of graft, meaning bits of illegal work, committing crime, right? There's always a possibility that you could get caught. And for such serious crimes, you know that all you have to do is get caught once and you are out of the game. Fact, right? So it happens to many of them. Um... For all the variety of crimes that I've just, I'm going to speak about now, fellows, you got nicked, you're out the game forever and ever and ever. Now, there is another, there are other hitmen in there, right? Well, just I find, there, well, there was, and there still is, right? There's one that we was going to talk about as well, allegedly Darren Waterhouse. Um, I think he was from Manchester or Liverpool, I can't remember which, right? Um once it all kicked off in the gym right i've got to be honest with you this one right um the muslim brotherhood was were, were getting hold we're gra get, grabbing you know um the day-to-day -day running um with the gang culture not just the muslim brotherhoods there was all kind of new young gangs coming through at the same time the old guard was slowly disappearing many men were joining for as a chess move whether they believed in what they others believed in is is um another question altogether but i could tell you there was a fight going on one time with one of um, darren waterhouse's best friends and he was in the gym and he was getting a right eye in and Darren Waterhouse didn't do nothing. He didn't even join in and help him, right? So we've got to say that. He did. He didn't join in and everyone stopped talking to him over that because it was always a rule that even, you know, like Colonel Custer in the old days that um, even Michael Caine, I think it was in Zulu Dawn, it, you know, when, when you, all right, the odds are stacked against you, you come out and you face the music and you're the last man standing, but you think, well, you know, all my, all my comrades have died. You know what I mean? I'm going to, I might as well join. Well, you, you don't want to be the only one that live. And then plus, if you lived and you, you was a coward and you didn't really, you know, you hid away while everybody, all your mates were dying, it's not really a good thing to live with, is it? You know what I mean? You've got to go down fighting at least, win, lose or draw. You can't can't pick and choose in that life, right? We know it's all a load of bollocks now. But at the end of the day, he didn't do nothing, right? So a few people stopped talking to him. That's the only thing that I can break down on this. There was rumours on other things as well and all that. I didn't really mind him. I thought he was all right. But those, those, those are the facts, right? No one can't argue with what I've just told you there, right? But he stands a better chance of getting out than some of those other hitmen and that kind of stuff because he's moving down in category, if you think, if you get what I mean. And when I look back on Victor Castigada, right? Victor, uh, they really served his tariff, I think. Am I right? Um, I left the to Uncle Phil. I'm sure he got sentenced in 1990 and he'd done about a 30 stretch. So he's, for those murders that Victor was in, as mad and horrible and horrific as it was for the victims on that, his tariff was actually nearly up when he killed the sex offender in the workshop, right? You know, when he hit him on the head and got another life term. So Victor, in his whole heart of hearts, didn't really believe he was going to get out. And he'd lived. And though Victor, the difference between Victor, some of these other men and, and, and Victor Castigada is a lot of men like Victor. He was a decent guy on a normal, normal day-to-day -day basis. He would take on bits of graft for the hierarchy. He would give him a couple of bits and bobs if he did this and do that. So, you know, whatever it was, you know, we all, uh, we, when we, we haven't got a lot in there and we know that we're the only means we got of, you know, people pleasing and pleasing the, the so-called big lot, if you get what I mean, and we'll do that for you. I'll do that for you and that for you, but I'll give you that and that and that. And then we'll look after you. Um, Victor, done a few hits as far as I know. I, I know of a couple. I was around him at that time. Right, and he's a seriously dangerous little fella. But he was as game as they come. But on a normal day-to-day -day basis, Victor wasn't a bully. He didn't really trouble anyone, right? And he used to send, like we spoke about before, Victor used to send money um, to his family up, up back to his country and that kind of stuff. So would he have would stood a chance of even getting out, Victor? Because the screws like Victor, 
them for some reason. He never ever fell out with them. You know what I mean? They used to pitter and patter around him, whether they were scared of him, whether they used to say, Victor, look to the... They used to listen. You know what I mean? The difference with Belfield, right? That old, dirty, stinking, no good um, sex case, right? Now, he's on protection. He's got a whole life term, right? Now he's even admitting to the sad murders of um, of Megan and Josie Russell and all that. Again, I would have liked to have seen him if I would have known about that one as well, right? Because I hate his guts. We know that I do. But he's not no he can't he's he's not thrown in the towel, is he? He's never getting out, but he's not going on. He's got his little bullying ways on the protection wing where they're all going to be a bit scared of him because that's the only way, only wing that he could stay on because he can't come on normal location and do that. But he's not having the last stand, is he? So he's accepting his fate that I'm in here for natural life. Oh, yeah. All right. I don't really like it. You know, I can wish I could still go be out there doing the wicked things that I did. Um, but, you know, if you're on protection, you want to live, don't you? Yeah, that, that's a good way of breaking that bit down. Because if you didn't, and you was as hard and as bad as what you think you was, which you wasn't, you'd be on the main... They, not, the, the prison officers can't put you on um, Rule 43. You can come off protection. You can come off there and have the final stand. Look at Silburn. There was Silburn. There was many um, rape, um, serial rapists that turned up on normal location and got rushed by the other inmates everywhere they went but yeah everywhere they went they, they turned up everywhere as soon as they used to land on the wing everybody used to start running towards them and hitting them and all that but they were fighting back and they got done but they didn't run off they didn't run off on protection as far as i remember right that was true they turned up they had more bottle than them and they had release dates didn't they but they didn't accept uh the the um, the hierarchy from dropping down, you know, the, from the way they looked on as when you're looked at on as rapists, and people are always going to have that over you, right? I don't care who you are. I've seen some rapists come on and mix in with certain crowds, and they let them do the cooking, and nah, nah, it wasn't because of that, and all that, and all that. One rule for one, and one rule for all. Sometimes, right? Tony Argent would have some Tony Argent ever told you about some people taking on, you know, certain people, and then and saying, yeah, he's no good, he's no good, but then you got him wrapped round you just because he's doing the cooking or joeying around for you you protected him but you didn't well it did, it did make no sense to me in the end if you get what i mean razor smith um will break it down properly to you as well but when you've got nothing to lose right uh and you don't there's no you're not you're dead when I used to do, live the way that I did on that 13 and the 8, right, back to back when I had them both sentences in quick succession, and I knew that I was going to have to serve all my, every single day of my sentence, I wasn't seeing no one on the outside world, right? You know what I mean? I threw the towel in completely. I thought to myself, you know what? I told you about that time when I did everything wrong, when I owed everyone, and I was going out on the yard, and I said, you know what? I don't care. I'm going out there today with two guns. And if I die, good bloody riddance. It's how you feel about yourself. And I'm not even, I'm not, I'm not no hit man, uh, murderer or, you know, rapist or serial this. And you know, my crimes ain't like some of those. So I've got a lot to live for because I've got a release date. But at the time, I was thinking, even so far away, I was thinking, ah, is this all you've ever amounted to? You've been here since you was a little boy. You know what? I'm doing exactly what I want in here. I'm living in here like I would have lived out there. That's the best way to explain it. And then when I went out there that day, the amount of people that turned up for me, you know, at first they let me go out and all that. And then you got Arge, oh, you got this one, you got that one. And every one of them, like, oh, fucking, I got a guy out there. Let me go and make sure Yami's all right. He's a fucking nutter, you know what I mean? Because, <laughs> you know, look, I'm going to get weighed in severely. You remember what happened to me in Garth? But that was me. You remember I called it on and you remember I played it I played it safe and I was I was the wrong one out of all that. But I only got a couple of bruises and all that. Uh, but I still turned up on the yard, if you get what I mean, mind you, they locked me out the gate there, down in, in the, I mean, it was in Preston, not Garth, yeah, Preston, and that, but I didn't feel no way when they was all running towards me, I was thinking, oh, good, good riddance, you know what I mean, you'd be glad it'd be all over, if you get what I mean, because then you don't have to face this, this rigmarole of waking up every day, 
hearing them doors unlocked, um, having listening to orders. You're not allowed to do this. You're not allowed to do that. Someone picking on you, someone saying something you don't like, listening to the same old garbage and the same old atmosphere for near enough 30, 40 years is enough sometimes to just go, you know what, please take me away from all this because you don't feel nothing when you're dead. Obviously, you don't have to feel the kind of things, the unworthiness and the self-esteem uh, that you're losing by just being uh, an institutionalised recidivist. In my case, imagine being some of them. You, 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 got, you, got, you got nothing left to live for. But amazingly, people like Paul Glenn, who's doing a natural life, he handles it really well. He's realistic. He doesn't pick on anyone. He doesn't fight with anyone, right? He just does his bird. You're all right. He doesn't look happy, Paul, but he's a decent man, if you get what I mean. He, 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 you know, if I was him, I'd throw him in the towel. He's another giant of a man, a real, real handful, Paul Glenn, right? But I used to think, well, boy, he's holding it up quite well. And then you looked at some of the... I looked at some of the Birmingham lot, I looked at some of the Manchester lot, I looked at some of the, you know, where there's gangs, unfortunately, where it's not gone right, but you can see the sadness on their face some days when they come out. They're going to do it, they're not going to, but they're not running around doing hectic madness to make their situation worse or trying to get themselves killed or whatever. I wonder if it crosses their mind, but yeah, what do we know also, right, sorry to ramble on, what do we know also? that there are men sadly man that i really loved that committed suicide and we you, we didn't see it coming i'm, I'm talking wayne Aaron, i'm talking desi cunningham i'm talking um charlie toes I, I love dearly you know what i mean and dave croak you know what i mean but many men that i sat down and i thought and i said to myself no way will they do that you know what i mean and what was going through their mind no mental health was apparent to me you know what i mean Gary Speed, well, I'm a leader supporter. I believe he did. Gary Speed died, done something, was bothering him from the past. That's what I believe when all that stuff was coming about. But scout, but I can't say, I'm not going to go into all that. But you never know what a man's living with, right? The men that I've just named that committed suicide, they weren't rapists. They weren't serial killers, right? They didn't just go outside. Um, They weren't just looking to kill people and do things like that. So they had to live or whatever, their armed robberies or, you know what I mean, Wayne, all, 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 all of them, they didn't really, they're not the most wickedest of um, 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 criminals, if you get what I mean, you know what I mean? But what, whatever was bothering them, unless there's foul play in it and the staff had a hand in it or it was neglect or whatever, either way, we wasn't there, right? But I'm telling you wholeheartedly, um, some of those that have been sentenced for what they've been sentenced for, I wouldn't want to <laughs> I told you already, the best thing to do would be to do what some of those the lovely men that I just spoke about there did, in my in my view, you know what I mean? Because um, whatever was bothering them was enough uh, for them to call it a day and call it time. Because in the end, too much custody and going through the same certain things and people thinking, ah, that 20, I'm 60, I'm, I'm 40 and I've got to do 25 feet. Oh, I'll get up there and I'll do that. I don't want to play a part in this no more. We look at it like you lost that, that life, that part of the life there. It wasn't what everybody made it out to be. No winners, no losers. Users. In the end, anyone that ever came out from a long, long sentence, as I'm seeing out there, seeing out here now, the ones that I thought were strong in there, I'm finding out here, the very, very, very different uh, men who had big names in there, very, very weak. Uh, and very, very traumatised and having the terrible times of ups and downs. And I'm having that. And I'm half the men that they were, if you get what I mean, in the three years that I've been now, mine's been mostly self-destructive. But it's hard to come back from long sentences to readapt. And when you, they always say the guilty feet have no rhythm. When you have to live with the things you've done, right? It's all right saying, yeah, yeah, I was this and I was that. I was a gangster. I, I'd done that and this and that and that. Don't ever think for one minute that when you do those things, those murders that you do and whether you meant it or not or whether you did and you, you did it the way, don't think that in the end, as you get older, you lie there and you wish that you never and it plays on your mind. Anything that played a part in your life, right? Because we've all got our own lives, 
We've all got, and what, what happened to us when we were little boys, we remember who we was, who growing into men. We knew that most of us at some stage during life would have had to be bullied when we was little. We didn't want to feel it again. And then we learned from that bit. And then we became what we thought were men. And we could do, but if I could do this, I'll be even more of a nutter than you then. And I'll get my points that way. I'm a dangerous man. And I'll, I'll, I'll but really it's all a, you're scared of your own self, really. Push yourself into being that way to be on the, the top scale of what, I mean, suppose great criminal was meant to be those 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 are the facts anything you've done i sentenced myself to death for things now in later life that i don't think i was guilty of if you get what i mean and there's smaller trivial things how do you live with some of the things you've done and some of the things that you've done that nobody else doesn't know about but hurts you deep enough for you to say you know what I'm calling it a day, mate. I was wrong. You know what I mean? It's hard, 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 hard. The human, the human psych, it don't matter, mate. Whatever you, unless you're an evil, evil man and you're, you know, you don't, you don't got no remorse for nothing at all. But many of the men that I met, they had a sort of decent soul inside of them and they will have it on the, on the rest, on them, on their mind for the rest of their lives when you do bad, bad things. For one reason or another. 20 minutes, yeah, I mean, come on, mate, you're gassing. Loads of love. I might even be up later.